morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to this video. It is Saturday, the 12th of March, 2022. Grace and peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ be unto you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ brings us peace. Shabbat Shalom. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is coming. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of all the world. He shall gather his wheat into his garner or the barn, and he shall burn the chaff with fire unquenchable. You don't want to be chaff, my friends. He's going to burn the chaff soon. So in this video, I'm going to cover the Passover period, which is up and coming very shortly, as you can see. Uh, the things which are happening in our world are all pointing to our very soon coming glorification. And if you've been watching this channel, you'll know that my favorite period of the, or the, my favorite um, potential time for the catching away of the church is on Passover. But I have a very interesting date today as well to share with you. And it's... Um, it's something that I have been looking at for uh, quite some time and considering. So it's not Passover, but if Passover comes and goes, then um, then this is a, a, a potential date of the rapture. And of course, it's all uh, biblical. Everything is about God's Moedims or his feasts. And uh, so, yeah, let's. I'm going to go through the... Um, the reasons why I believe the, the, the rapture of the church will happen on Passover, biblically speaking, uh, and then I will show you what's happening in the heavens. And then I'm going to share this date with you as well, which is and the reasons why I think that uh, it's going to happen on uh, or it could happen on that date. OK, so let's start off with uh, Passover. So why Passover? Well, the reason is because if you have a closer look at the events which happen in the Bible. And of course, God has always done things on his feasts. So there's nothing that God hasn't done on his feasts, if you think about it. Um, the Passover uh, was given to uh, Israel and the dates on which it occurred, um, obviously pointing to our redemption and how God would redeem the world through Christ. Um, he fulfilled his feasts um, if we have a closer look in the word of God, this is the reason why I believe the rapture of the church will happen on Passover is because there are so many things on which uh, Passover actually occurred. So the first sacrifice in the Garden of Eden happened on Passover, Genesis 3, 1. And Adam also, and to Adam also and to his wife did the Lord make coats of skin and clothed them. So that was obviously pointing to the Passover, which occurred in Egypt and the Passover, which occurred at Calvary. And I don't see any reason why that wouldn't have happened on the same day, the 14th of Nisan. Uh, so the ark came to rest on Passover, Genesis 8, 4. And the ark rested in the seventh month on the 17th day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat. So that's when... The ark came to rest on the very same day, which was used to be the seventh month before the Exodus, uh, when God reset the calendar, which I'm going to cover in a, a short while. And that was on the 17th day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat. So I'm talking, uh, referencing the Passover period, not just uh, the eve of Passover, but also um, the the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So that that's called uh that's called Pesach in uh, in Israel, and those Passover Eve and those seven days uh, feast of unleavened bread. So I'm, I'm I'm referencing that week of Passover. And the everlasting covenant with Abraham was made on Passover Genesis fifteen nine to thirteen, and he said unto him, That's God, take me a heifer of three years old and a she goat of three years old and a ram of three years old and a turtle dove and a young pigeon, and he took unto him all these. So all of those sacrifices are pointing to the uh, to the future sacrifices that would come, first of all, uh, in the tabernacle, and then the temple once it was built, and basically covering all 
uh, all classes of people. So he, the, if you were wealthy, then you could afford a, a goat or a ram. And if you were poor, then you would take a bird. And he took unto him all these and divided them in the midst and laid each piece one up against another. But the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abraham drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell on Abram. And lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. So, and he said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And then later, Abraham sees the pre-incarnate Jesus on Passover. Uh, in Genesis 18, 3, it says, And Abraham said, My Lord, calling him my Lord, now, if I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. And Abraham ran unto the herd and fetched a calf and a tender good and gave it unto the young man, and he hasted to dress it. And the Lord said to Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh? So this is after God has told Abraham that he's going to have a child. Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. So here we're, we're talking about um, God telling Abraham that he's going to have a, have a child, and this occurs um, on Passover as well, because here you can see he's, he is, uh, he's hastening to, to get a kid. And then later um, you see in the destruction of Sodom, which was very shortly after this, uh, in Genesis 19, it says, And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him and entered into his house, and he made them a feast and did bake unleavened bread, unleavened bread, and they did eat. So, um, again, Passover. This is pointing to Passover. And so the, the very same day that the everlasting covenant was made with Abraham on Passover, uh, and then Abraham sees pre-incarnate Jesus Christ on Passover with the two angels who then went and destroyed Sodom. Very shortly after that, they went straight to Sodom and they were eating unleavened bread. So the Bible is giving us hints and clues pointing to Passover all over the place. And Israel left Egypt with Moses on Passover, Exodus 12, 41. And it came to pass at the end of 430 years, even the self same day, it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. So Passover was when the covenant was made, the everlasting covenant with Abraham. Passover was when they exited Egypt. Um, and Israel enters into the promised land with Joshua on Passover, Joshua 5.11. And they did eat of the old corn of the land of the morrow after the Passover, unleavened cakes and parched corn in the self same day. And Joshua sees pre-incarnate Jesus on Passover as they're about to take out Jericho. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and look at what Jesus said, lift up your eyes and look and behold, there stood a man over against him with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said, art thou for us or for our adversaries? And of course, Jesus says, I'm for neither. And the walls of Jericho came down on Passover. So the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet that the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city. Oh, Lord, may we go up into the city of our living God, not built with the hands of man. Every man straight before him and they took the city. Hallelujah. And Rahab the gentle was saved on Passover in uh, Joshua Six very very um very close period of time to to the falling of the walls and the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brethren and all that she had and brought out all her kindred and left them without the camp of Israel and they burnt the city with fire and all that was therein only the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord and Joshua saved Rahab the harlot, alive, and her father's household and all that she had. And she dwelleth in the, in the land of Israel, even unto this day, because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. 
Gideon then sees the pre-incarnate Jesus on Passover in Judges 6.20. And the angel of God said unto him, Take the flesh and eat unleavened cakes and lay them upon this rock and pour out the broth. And he did so. That, so that's uh, Gideon. He also defeats the Amalekites on Passover in Judges 7.13. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow and said, but this is whether he's considering whether to go against the Amalekites. And then this man has this dream. Behold, I had a dream and lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian and came into a tent and smote it that it fell and overturned it that the tent lay along. So here's a hint of the unleavened bread, uh, the unleavened cakes, barley bread. And this was the period which Gideon defeats the Amalekites on Passover. So I believe that all these things are pointing to the catching away on Passover because they are dotted all over the Bible. Manoah and his wife see the pre-incarnate Jesus on Passover. That's Judges 13. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray thee, let us detain thee until we shall have made ready a kid for thee, Passover. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, why askest thou after my name, seeing it as it is secret, right? So Jesus has a name which no man knows in the book of Revelation. So Manoah took a kid and with a meat offering and offered it upon the rock to the Lord. And the angel did wondrously. And Manoah and his wife looked on. For it came to pass when the flame went up toward heaven from off the altar, that the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar. Can you imagine? And Manoah and his wife looked on it and fell on their faces to the ground. Be pretty terrifying, right? If you see this man, the angel of the Lord, and suddenly he's, he vanishes in, in the flame of the fire. Wow. And Manoah said unto his wife, we shall surely die because we have seen God. Jesus. Yeshua HaMashiach. Yeshua HaMelech. Yeshua Messiah. Yeshua Ben Yud Hei Vav Hei. Yeshua, the son of Jehovah, the son of the living God. I'm getting ready for preaching. Esther defeated the plans of Haman on Passover, Esther 3.12. Then were the king's scribes called on the 13th day of the first month. So this is Purim, which they actually moved to a month before because they couldn't fast on that day. And there was written according to all that Haman did, according uh, and to the king's lieutenants and to the governors that were of every province and to the rulers of every people and to the province according to the writing thereof and to every people after the language in the name of King Asherus was it written and sealed with the king's ring. So you'll recall in the story of Esther, they feasted on, they sorry, they fasted on the feast of Passover. And then when Haman was defeated, they set the feast of Purim a month before because obviously they couldn't set a a, um, a memorial or a, a feast of which is um, which is actually a, a period of, of fasting on the Passover period. So it couldn't fall in conjunction with the Passover period. So Purim is actually a, a month before uh, because you can't feast on Passover. Uh, you can't f fast on Passover. Sorry. Okay. And then Josh, Josiah destroyed all the altars of Baal on Passover. So that's 2 Chronicles 34 and 35. And Josiah took away all the abominations out of all the countries that pertained to the children of Israel and made all that were present in Israel to serve, even to serve the Lord their God. And all his days they departed not from the following of the Lord, the God of their fathers. And in uh, 2 Chronicles 35, moreover, Josiah kept the Passover unto the Lord in Jerusalem. So they hadn't done this for a long time. There'd been idolatry in the land of, of uh, Israel with the with the wicked kings that, um, that did evil in the sight of the Lord continuously. And then Josiah came along, and although he didn't live for a very long time, he didn't rule for a very long time, um, he was killed by Pharaoh Necho because he really went against uh, the word of the Lord. But he was the last good king in the land of Israel. And it says, and they killed the Passover on the 14th day of the first month, and there was no Passover like to that kept in Israel from the days of Samuel the prophet, neither did all the kings of Israel keep such a Passover as Josiah had kept, and priests and Levites and all Judah and Israel that were present and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. So when it talks about um, 
that God will lay upon uh, Israel a, a spirit of supplication. And he talks about, they shall look unto me whom they have pierced, and there shall be a great mourning in, um, in the land of Israel as the morning uh, of uh, the morning that took place in the Hadadidrim of Megiddo. That's talking about when Josiah was, was killed and all Israel wept for Josiah. They're going to weep for Messiah who was pierced through just like they wept for Josiah who was pierced through by Pharaoh and Echo. So there's a similarity there. And the second temple, of course, was rededicated on Passover. Uh, so it says in Ezra uh, chapter 6, this is when they return from Babylon. And this house was finished on the third day of the month of Adar, which in the sixth year of the reign of King Darius. And the children of Israel, and so they finished the house on the third day of the month of Adar. And the priests, the Levites, and the rest of the children of the captivity kept the dedication of this house of the Lord with joy. And the children of the captivity kept the Passover. So Passover was the first uh, the first Moedim, the feast that was kept after the rededication of the uh, or after the, the rededication of the temple, which was the second temple. And all of them were pure and killed the Passover for all the children of the captivity and for their brethren the priests and for themselves and the children of Israel, which will come again out of captivity and all such as had separated themselves unto them from the filthiness of the heathen of the land to seek the Lord God of Israel. They did eat and kept the feast of the uneven bread seven days with joy, with joy, Passover with joy. For the Lord had made them joyful and turned the heart of the king of Assyria unto them to strengthen their hands in the work of the house of God, the God of Israel. And Daniel sees Gabriel on Passover. This is when the 70 weeks prophecy is given to Daniel. See when it's, see when it's received, Daniel chapter 9. In the first year of Darius, of the son of Asaris, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over them of the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of years. So he's looking at the books of Jeremiah, whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. Okay, so so we, we're now coming up to the 74th year. So we're, we are very, very close, guys. Uh, very, very close. We know that, that that 70 figure and God's pattern of doing things as he's done them before. So it's imminent. And he says in verse 15, and now, now he's praying to the Lord. He says, and now. O Lord, our God, that has brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and has gotten the renown as at this day. So he's talking when he's praying, he's talking about and now as at this day, he's talking about Passover. Daniel receives the 70 weeks prophecy, probably the most profound prophecy, numerically speaking, with numbers and mathematics and calculating the days Let no one tell you but calculating the days. Um, of the return of the Messiah is unbiblical. Read Daniel chapter 9 uh, and at the end, 9 verses 24 to 27, basically gives us a mandate to calculate the number of days that the Messiah is going to return. So setting dates and saying it is going to happen on this date is obviously foolish, but to say that it could potentially happen on this date, give reasons why and, and uh, explain to say, this is why you believe that it might happen on the state, biblically speaking, gives us hope. It gives us hope. So, and joy, and uh, keeps us occupied and keeps us studying and looking for the things that, that God would have us to find. It is the glory of the Lord to conceal a thing, and it is the honor of kings to search out a, a thing which God has hidden. So here we see, and now, verse 15, and now, O Lord, our God, that has brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and has gotten the renown as at this day. We have sinned, we have done wickedly. Has this world not done that? Yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. So this is on Passover. I believe Daniel received the 70 weeks prophecy. John the Baptist was born around Passover, Luke 21, 20, 
4 says in the course of Abijah, which which uh, is that is mid June if you if you work out when the course when the, uh, the the courses of the priests and their serving in the temple occurred there was in the days of Herod the king of Judea a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abijah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron and her name was Elizabeth so we know that John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah and it says that Elijah will come before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So he's going to tell Israel that they have missed the Messiah again. Elijah comes down with the second witness, who I think is Moses. And uh, boy, are they going to get a shock. Jesus made the promise of the blessed hope on the eve of Passover. So this is... Uh, um, John chapter 13 just tells us when it was. It says, now before the feast of Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Praise you, Lord Jesus. And then John chapter 14 is the blessed hope. Who can not love this chapter? If you're watching this channel, you know this one. Let your heart not be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me, in my Father's house. Oh, many, many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Hallelujah. The blessed hope on Passover. Jesus was, of course, crucified on Passover and was the preparation of the Passover about the sixth hour. And he said unto the Jews, behold, your king. So that was, um, that was Pilate. And uh, you remember when Abraham... Uh, on the, on Passover, God put him into a deep sleep and he was overcome with darkness. Um, and he made the everlasting covenant with Abraham and there was darkness there. And there was also, also of course, darkness on Passover when uh, Jesus Christ uh, gave up the ghost. It was dark for three hours. And um, yeah, so Passover, resurrected bodies of dead men happened on Passover, Matthew 27. And the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Hallelujah, that's the sun coming out. The sun is rising. I'm going to be going to London to preach the gospel soon. Please pray for the lost of London to receive the gospel. And Paul was a Roman in Jerusalem at, at Stephen's death on Passover. So Paul was um, Paul was a Roman. And in Acts 8, 1, we read here, and Saul was consenting unto his death. That is uh, Stephen's, the first martyr's death. And at the time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles. So Paul was in Jerusalem, um, obviously for one of the Moedims, and that, if you read in, uh, in the same chapter, it tells us, that's Acts chapter 8, in the same chapter. So this was also um, this Ethiopian treasurer, uh, this eunuch was, was, was in Jerusalem, during a feast, it says in Acts chapter 8, and he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of Eth Ethiopia, who had the charge of all her tre treasure, had come to Jerusalem for to worship. So we see in chapter 8, they're in Jerusalem for a Moedim. Um, Paul is there, and um, also Philip is there. So these things occurred on Passover. And Peter was released from the prison on Passover, Acts chapter 12. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison. That's, uh, that is uh, Herod. And delivered him to four quaternions court of soldiers to keep him. Intending after Easter, okay, after Easter, to bring him forth to the people. So that's Passover. And Peter was therefore kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church of God. For him, and the angel comes, and Peter's in such a deep and peaceful sleep. He's just about to be murdered the next day, <laughs> and the angel has to, the angel has to uh, smite him to wake him up. Hey, hey, Peter, wake up, wake up! Peter's fast asleep, <laughs> getting ready to see his Jesus. Peter was probably a little bit disappointed um, that he wasn't going to go and see his Lord. 
So let's, uh, let's have a look at the constellations and what's happening in the heavens. And we will see <clears throat> that there's two days, actually. So the first date, um, the first date, let's have a look at uh, April the 1st. So April the 1st, Nissan uh, 1. The reason why I want to look at this day, okay, here we go. So this is this is the constellations in the heavens. This is what it looks like in the heavens. So here's uh, Capricorn and Aquarius. And you can see here are all the planets clustered up in one part of the uh, in in one area of the the sky. And I just want to preface this with anybody who might be watching this and going, "What on earth is this guy doing looking at the constellations of heaven?" If you watch this channel, um, you will know, and I've covered this in great length of detail, that the constellations were given to the progeny of Adam. So before the 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 flood uh josephus records that the people of the antediluvian world that is before uh god destroyed the world they understood the things of god by reading them in the heavens so the word of god was actually written in the heavens and we read in psalm chapter 19 that the heavens declare the glory of god Day unto day, they, they, they give a speech. Night unto night, they show forth knowledge. So the constellations were given to the progeny of Adam. They declare the word of God in the sky. It's not a coincidence that there is a lion in Leo, lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah. There's, there's not a con it's not a coincidence that there's a virgin, a Virgo. It's not a coincidence that here we can see there's, there's a ram with, a, with the tail of a fish. Uh, from the sacrifice comes the vitality of life. So it's not a coincidence that it's a man pouring out water. That is the Holy Spirit. It's not a coincidence that there is Pisces, which is the fish. We know that the, the, we are made fishes of men. It's not a coincidence that there is Aries, the ram, the sacrifice, the sacrificial lamb. It's not a coincidence that there is a bull, the judgment of God, the, the reme, he shall pierce all these things are in the Bible. So if you've watched this channel, you should you should know this, that we certainly don't look to these things as being personal. We don't attribute them to ourselves personally. That is called natal astrology. That is um, idolatry. It's evil. It's satanic. It's the method by which Satan has perverted these things to associate time with ourselves, to associate the constellations with ourselves. We don't do that. God has given us a mandate to look to the heavens with the story of the Magi and the wise men. They looked to the heavens and they found the baby or the, the, the young child, Messiah. A star shall rise from Jacob. The son of man is described as, um, as the bright and morning star. So the, the, the Bible talks about Orion. The Bible talks about the, the Pleiades. The Bible talks about the constellations. The constellations shall not shine forth their light in the day of the Lord. So in the tribulation of mankind, in the day of darkness, when the sun is put out and the moon, there's no constellations in there. There's no signs to be seen. So so the reason I'm saying this is because I know that there are many new subscribers to this channel and um, we are looking to the heavens for the Messiah. We are looking to the, um, we're looking to these things for the coming of the Lord. That's it, that's all beginning and end, the, the heavens declare the glory of God. Jesus Christ said, lift up your head for your salvation draws nigh. He says, there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars. So, so Jesus has told us, look to the heavens, guys, because this is, what's, this is what you need to be looking at. The, the sun shall be darkened and the moon turned to blood. The Bible mandates that we look for these things. These are the works of the hands of God. And he made the signs in the heaven. He made the... the um, the, the 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 light of heaven in uh, the, in Genesis to to for signs and for seasons so so these are the reasons why we're looking at these things okay so April the first is a date that I want to mention April the first of course April Fools this year is also Nissan the first so they are falling in conjunction this year we also see the feasts of the Lord this year are falling in conjunction. Hebrews 
uh, on the Hebrew calendar and on the Gentile calendar. We see uh, Pentecost is falling on the same day as Shavuot. We see Pesach is falling on the same day as Passover. So Good Friday, which is, of course, we know Jesus wasn't crucified on a Friday, but it just so happens that uh, the 14th of Nisan is Good Friday this year. So it falls in, conjun in conjunction and they there seems to be a symmetry with the, the Hebrews and the Gentile calendar this year. So the reason why we should take note of April the 1st, April Fools, can you imagine the rapture happens on April Fools? Won't this will feel foolish? Uh, and Nisan the 1st is because God does something very interesting before he, he institutes the Passover and tells Israel that they're getting out of here. That is Egypt in uh, uh, Exodus chapter 12, before he institutes the very salvation of mankind, that which would that which would um, be a type of the salvation of mankind before God sets up that um, that feast, which is the Passover and tells Israel about sacrificing the lamb, which is, of course, the salvation of the world. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of all the world. Before God does that, he sets the date. He, he changes the date. Before God institutes the Passover, he talks about time. He talks about the date. He talks about this being a new month, Exodus chapter 12. So Nisan the 1st, April the 1st, potentially, <clears throat> could it be that Nisan the 1st was when God set the world into its its motion. Could it be that on the sign the first is the very date of the six thousand year we know God created created the world in six literal days and in the seventh day he rested and that points to the six thousand years and the seventh thousandth year which is the millennial kingdom of Christ. That's that's the, the pattern of every week that we live. And uh, the Sabbath is pointing to our Sabbath rest, the millennial kingdom of Christ, where Christ rules and reigns on the earth. Could it be that April, or should I say Nisan the first, was the day which God set the world and the heavens and, and, and the, the natural order into things as we know it on that day? So Nisan the first, I want to point out, is... Is, is very important because it could be that that is the that that was the beginning of of this world as as we know it um, or as the Bible uh, begins to describe it. Nisan the first, and here you can see. Uh, remember that on the on the twenty third of September, twenty seventeen, you will recall that it was the woman clothed with the sun and the moon at her feet and upon her head a crown of twelve stars, and we. We saw Jupiter was located in the womb of Virgo, and that was going around and around for nine months, and then it, and then it carried on moving on. And here we see on the opposite side of the constellations, we see these stars. Remember the crown uh, on her head, a crown of 12 stars, was made up of the stars which are located in Leo, and these three planets. So this is what completed her crown was these three planets. Now we see again, uh, it wasn't Saturn. Okay, Saturn wasn't located there. Uh, it was Venus, Mercury, and Mars, was, uh, which, which, which made up the, 12, the crown of 12 stars. But now we see Venus, Saturn, and Mars. And here we can see that um, we can see that the sun is in Pisces, the band of the fish going backwards. So I just want to point out this date here, which is Nisan the 1st. Uh, it's interesting where these stars uh, or these planets are located. Uh, they're in Capricorn. We know the Capricorn is, is uh, the sacrificial uh, ram. It's got the tail of a fish, which means from the sacrifice comes life. So the vitality of the fish, the, 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 uh, the tail of the fish. And you can read all these things in E.W. Ballinger's book, uh, The Witness of the Stars, and Francis Rolleston um, has also uh, written a book. These were written uh, uh, hundreds, hundreds of years ago, 
where they recognize that the constellations of the heavens are pointing to the uh, are pointing to are biblically are bib biblical signs. Um, okay, so that is the first date. So here we can see there's the sun uh, in Pisces, and there I don't know if you can see that just over there is is uh, Mercury, and there's the moon. So it's a new moon. Which is uh, which is on Nissan the first is a new moon. So Nissan the first is the first date, which is which is April the first. So could this potentially be the the beginning of the foundation of the world and the motions being set into their orders by the hand of God? Nissan the first. Uh, there's also a very good video um, which T W Tram has done. Um, so I'll give a shout out to T W Tram. It's T R A W M with uh, with uh, two M's, and you can find his channel. And he's gone over uh, some very interesting reasons why the uh, the potential catching away of the church could happen on Nissan the first. Um, I might actually add his video to the end of this video. Um, if that's okay with you, Brother Tram, I'm sure you won't mind. More people that see the area. Um, that's certainly my thinking anyway. Okay, so then the next date is, of course, April the 15th. So here we'll see the the, the planets uh, moving. You can see there Mars overtakes uh, Saturn over there in Capricorn. And we're going to pass over now. Okay, and as you can see, Passover also all of the uh, all of the 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 planets are in one portion of the sky, and here you can also see that Jupiter is right by the planet Neptune. So there's a there's a conjunction there with the planet Neptune, and and uh, Neptune is the god, the so-called god, small g of water, and of course. The Lord can use these things to show us signs. Venus is in Aquarius, which is the, the water bearer pouring out the water. Is this the day that the Holy Spirit is going to be taken away, taken out of the way? And all the people in whom the Holy Spirit dwells and resides disappears. So the catching away of the church, all those born again believers in whom the spirit dwells who have faith disappear vanish so god proves faith by the rapture of the church it is a literal proving of the faith of god because everybody who has faith in god you cannot have faith no man calls jesus christ my lord unless by the holy ghost everybody who has the holy spirit in them vanishes disappears and so he doesn't testify of himself we know that the holy spirit testifies of Christ, but all those in whom the Holy Spirit dwells vanish. And therefore, God proves faith to the world because all who have it suddenly disappear. So it is the literal proving of faith to the world. And what other events but the rapture of the church could prove faith to mankind? How does God prove faith to mankind? That faith is, um, faith is what justifies a man before God. Faith is belittled by this world. Faith is mocked and ridiculed by this world. Faith is poo-poo. It's taboo. Uh, they, they say that faith is irrelevant, but God says that a man shall be justified by faith. By faith, a man is justified. With faith, faith as small as a mustard seed can move mountains, mountains of sin, mountains and mountains, rivers and oceans and seas and valleys of sin. And be removed by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So faith is proven at the rapture of the church. This is why it's, it's critical to understand that God is going to prove faith, the faith of mankind in the rapture. So here we see that um, the Holy, uh, uh, sorry, Venus is uh, in the uh, water bearer and Jupiter is just about to enter into Pisces. Now, Pisces and Virgo are the two representations of Israel in the constellations. So you can research this and you'll, you'll find that Pisces as the fish 
and Virgo, of course, as the, the woman who gives birth to the Messiah um, and the, the, the woman who gives birth to the man child in the book of Revelation chapter 12. That is Israel who goes into the wilderness persecuted by Satan. So, so here you can see that Jupiter is just about to enter into Pisces and Pisces is on the opposite side. So we remember we saw uh, let's um, let's uh, step backwards to September the 23rd. So here you can see September the 23rd. There's Jupiter, uh, the woman clothed with the sun and the moon at her feet. You can't see the moon because it's a new moon, um, and on her head a crown of 12 stars. So uh, it is um, Leo, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine stars, 10, 11, 12 stars make up her crown. There's Virgo, clothed with the sun, and Jupiter's been in her womb for nine months, going round and round and round. And then and then comes the sign, right? And this happened on this happened on on the feast of trumpets or uh, Yom Teruah. And that's why it makes it interesting. Remember that blood moons and solar eclipses happen pretty much all the time they, they happen fairly often but they don't happen all the time on the feast days of the lord and that's what makes them interesting it's not just the constellations um, and the, the planets being located at certain places um, which are which are interesting but when they happen on the feast days of the lord so that's what makes them interesting the blood moons happening on passover and sukkot of 2014 and 2015 Passover Sukkot Passover Sukkot the Revelation chapter 12 sign this happening on the feast of trumpets a woman clothed with the sun and the moon at her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars and she being in uh, she's she's travailing in in birth so she's she, she's had Jupiter which is Tzedek uh, the man child righteousness in her in her womb going around for nine months and then suddenly there's the sign on uh, the feast of trumpets Okay, so now we step forward. And just by the way, this date, uh, the 23rd of September, 2017, is 1,000. Here you can see here at the top where my arrow is. If you, you'll have to, you won't be able to, probably won't be able to see it. If you're watching this on your phone, you want to zoom in on a, on a large screen. But anyways, this is 1,666 days from Passover of this year. So Revelation chapter 12 sign is 1,666 days from Passover this year. Check it out. Okay, so there's, there is your, your date of Passover. You can see the constellations are all, um, sorry, the, the planets are, are all spread out over these three constellations. You've got the sacrifice, the sacrificial ram, which is Capricorn, Saturn, there Saturn is. Then you've got Mars and Venus. Um, in the water bearer pouring out the water, that's the Holy Spirit. Uh, and then you've got Jupiter and Neptune also just about to enter into Pisces, which is uh, the fish. Now, remember the band of the fish going backwards uh, or horizontally? That's a picture of Israel going into the tribulation. The picture, the band of the fish going upwards is, uh, or vertically, is the picture of the church going up towards heaven. And there's the sun. You can see the sun is rising right on the band of the fish going upwards on the feast of Passover. So Passover is very interesting in the heavens. The heavens declare the glory of God. And uh, you've got Mercury and Uranus in the constellation of Aries. So there you go. Uh, all the planets, including Uranus and Neptune, all the planets are in one, two, three, four constellations. They're in four constellations. Okay. So now the third and final date. So Nissan the 1st, April the 1st, Nissan the 14th uh, and 15th, of course, Passover. And this is the final date with which I want to share with you. So I'm just going to fire up uh, the Bible, New Letter Bible. And I have to be going soon because it's getting late. Okay, so Revelation chapter 1. In Revelation chapter 1, I'm just going to zoom in on this. 
Okay, in Revelation chapter 1, verses 3, it says, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein. Okay? For the time is at hand. For the time is at hand. And also, so Jesus says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. If we look at Revelation chapter 22, so we just looked at the first book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 1, and we look at Revelation chapter 22, it says the same thing here. It says in Revelation 22 verses 10, it says, And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. Well, that's weird. He's telling John, don't seal the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And in Daniel, remember, he'll say, seal up the, the things uh, which are written for the, for the time is, 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 in a, is in a, it's in a long time to come. But in Revelation, it says, don't seal the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And again, for the time is at hand. For the time is at hand. It says the same thing. It says the same. It says about the book of Revelation is a blessing to all those who read it and hear the words thereof. And then it says again, let's just go back and read that one again. Blessed is he that reads, readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein. That's, that is the book of Revelation. Keep those things for the time is at hand. Right. And then it says here again, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book for the time is at hand. So. Is this pointing, and this is this is just uh, the date that I wanted to share with you. It says in Revelation twenty two twenty one, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, Amen. Revelation twenty two twenty one, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, Amen. The time is at hand. Is the time in the book of Revelation? Is the time the book of Revelation? The time is at hand, the book of Revelation, Revelation 22, verses 21. Now, we know that we are in year 22. We know that we are, we are in 2022, and we've just completed 2021. And, of course, the book of Revelation is full of three sevens, right? So there's the seven churches uh, in the book of Revelation, um, which Jesus writes to in chapter two and three, that's, uh, there's the, um, there's the seven ages, which, which the churches represent over the last 2000 years, the seven church ages. And we are at the end of the age, the final church, the church of Laodicea There's the seven, uh, trumpet judgments. There's the seven bowl or vile judgments. Um, there's the seven seals, um, and so the book of Revelation is packed with sevens, and we you know 21 is seven threes. We, so we have just completed 2021, and we're in year 2022, and this is just too close for me to just be like, okay, we'll just ignore it. Uh, there's 22 chapters in the book of Revelation, so we know that obviously there are not 21 months, but there are this could be perhaps pointing to 21 weeks. So I thought, okay, well, 21 weeks is uh, 21 times seven, times seven, okay? Uh, 21 times seven is, a, is 147. So if we want to go to, uh, let's just, uh, let's increase this. So if we want to go to, what is day 147, 147 of 2022, and we get to, uh, let's have a look, day 147, of 2022 uh let's here we go uh where is it day 147 of 2022 is may the 27th okay and that just happens to be 40 percent may the 27th uh day 147 is week 21 21 sevens is day 147 okay so now may 27th that's may 27th if we have a look uh and i've got uh, uh, 
Google Calendar. If you ever look in Google Calendar, so in Google Calendar, I have the Hebrew dates um, as well as all the feasts and stuff. So if we go to May the 27th, uh, you can see, okay, so of course the day in Israel starts the day before. So May the 27th is, or the 20, 26th and 27th, so that's the 25th of a year, is Ascension Day. So Ascension Day is, the, is, um, is May the 26th to the 27th. Ascension Day is, is 147, this 147th day of the year. So basically what I'm trying to say is, is, could the book of Revelation be telling us the very date? Could this be telling us the date? This is Ascension Day. If we look at year 22, 2022, if we look at the 21st week, week 21, that is 147 days, 20, 21 times 7. That falls on Ascension Day. That is when Jesus Christ ascended 10 days before Shavuot, 10 days before Pentecost, 27 days. Pentecost, uh, so the 20, 26th to the 27th, Pentecost is on is on the is on the sixth of um, of June. So could this potentially be pointing to the date of the rapture of the church? The time is at hand. The the book of Revelation says the time is at hand twice. It says it at the beginning of the book and it says it at the end of the book. The time is at hand. Now you could say, okay, well that means the time is is nigh, right? Why didn't the translators use the time is nigh? Time is, it says the time is at hand. The book of Revelation, when you're reading it, the time is in your hand, right? That's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to get at here. So could this be pointing Revelation 22, 21 to the very date of the rapture of the church? This cannot be applied at any other stage in, uh, in, in history. It would have to be, of course, Christ um, was, uh, was, was crucified after year 22 in the first century. Uh, okay, maybe in, you could say maybe the second century, uh, maybe once in a thousand years, this can be applied. So now we're in the 22nd year of the second millennium. Uh, uh, that is to the second millennium. I'm just saying, guys, uh, that there cannot be applied next year. It could not be applied any other time um, except for, I guess you could say, maybe 1922. Um, or I guess you could apply it every hundred years. But anyways, what I'm saying is everything that's happening in our world today and 2022, 22, 21, that is Ascension Day. Okay, so that is the other date that I wanted to share with you is the date of Ascension, which is uh, the 26th to the 27th. That is, that could be, maybe, I don't know, we'll see, where the last verse of the Bible, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. 22, 21. He ascended on that day. May we also ascend on that day. We shall see. That which was done before shall be done again. And uh, he is the first fruits. And then we are after him, right? So who says... We can't go on the very same day, but I'm saying that would mean that the, the the last verse in the Bible gives us the day on which it happens. Anyways, I kind of like that idea, and um, I need to get ready and head off to London. I'm going to process this video and upload it. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Surely he comes quickly. Even so, amen. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I'll see you in the sky. Biblical year ahead, see world changing events. Hey, this is T.W. Tram, author and End Times Watchman. In this short video, I'm going to give 10 reasons I believe Nissan 1, the Biblical New Year, is a pivotal date in 2022. So let's dive right into the reasons. Reason number one Nissan 1 is a pivotal date in 2022. 
Daniel, seven weeks. Nisan 1 this year marks the completion of seven sabbatical weeks since Jerusalem was restored to the Jews in 1967. This is significant because Daniel's week's prophecy says Messiah will appear seven weeks after Jerusalem is restored. In verse 25 we read, From the going forth of the command to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there shall be seven weeks. The only modern restoration of Jerusalem occurred in June 1967. Counting seven weeks from the start of the first sabbatical week after 1967, which is Nisan 1973, we arrive at Nisan 2022. Reason number two, Nisan 1, is a pivotal date in 2022, the 50th year. Because Nisan 1 this year marks the completion of seven sabbatical weeks, it also marks the start of a 50th year, a potential jubilee. The Jubilee is called the Year of Redemption, or the Acceptable Year of the Lord, designations with profound eschatological overtones. Pertaining to the Feast of the Lord, it is interesting to note that, because 2022 is the 50th year, this year's Pentecost, which is the 50th day, represents a 50th within a 50th, a numeric concurrence denoting harvest and the fullness of time that occurs only twice a century. Reason number three, Nisan 1, is a pivotal date in 2022. Jerusalem's Wall Nisan 1 this year marks the completion of seven and sixty-two sabbatical weeks since Jerusalem's Wall was rebuilt by the Islamic ruler Suleiman circa 1536 A.D. This is significant because Daniel's week's prophecy mentioned specifically the wall surrounding Jerusalem being rebuilt. Suleiman ordered the rebuilding of Jerusalem's wall in 1536-37 A.D. Counting seven and sixty-two weeks from the start of the first sabbatical week following the order to rebuild, which is Nisan 1539 A.D., we arrive at Nisan 2022. Reason number four, Nisan 1, is a pivotal date in 2022, Solar Eclipse Anniversary. Nisan 1 this year marks seven years, or one sabbatical week, to the day since a total solar eclipse darkened the northernmost tip of the globe, the point where the longitudinal lines intersecting every nation and landmass converge. Besides occurring on the biblical new year, the Nisan 1 eclipse of seven years ago coincided with the spring equinox. For perspective, a total solar eclipse occurs on the spring equinox only one other time during the roughly 750-year period spanning 1662 A.D. to 2406 A.D. Such an eclipse at the top of the globe, however, like the one seven years ago, is said to happen only once every 100,000 years, making it unprecedented. According to the Jewish Talmud, solar eclipses are a sign for the Gentile world. That the unprecedented Nisan eclipse occurred seven years ago is significant because God typically gives a seven-year or seven-day warning prior to bringing judgment. Reason number five, Nisan 1, is a pivotal date in 2022, the eleventh week. Nisan 1 this year marks the start of the 11th sabbatical week since Israel became a nation in 1948. The number 11 denotes chaos, disorder, and judgment in Scripture, themes associated with the tribulation period. The next sabbatical cycle, beginning in 2029, is the 12th. The number 12 signifies God's authority and a perfect governmental foundation in Scripture, pointing to the establishment of Jesus' millennial kingdom. Could the sabbatical week beginning in 2022 see the start of the tribulation? And the week after that, the establishment of God's kingdom on earth? Reason number six, Nisan 1 is a pivotal date in 2022, the 354th week. 
Nissan won this year marks the start of the 354th sabbatical week since Daniel's week's prophecy began to be fulfilled by the Jews' return to Jerusalem, initiated on the first day of Nisan in 457 B.C. The number 354 is significant for a couple of reasons. First, it is the number of days comprising the lunar year. Since the moon is symbolic of the church, or bride of Christ, it could be said that 354 denotes the fullness of time related to the bride. Second, it is interesting to note that Strong's number 354 in the Hebrew concordance is the word il, referring to a stag or male deer. Strong's number 354 in the Greek concordance is the word analempsis, referring to a taking up into heaven. That the Hebrew and Greek words related to the number 354 refer to a stag and a taking up to heaven is striking, because one of the most profound rapture illustrations in the Bible depicts Jesus as a young stag who comes suddenly to gather up his beloved. In Song chapter 2 we read, The voice of my beloved, behold he comes, leaping upon the mountains, skipping upon the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Behold, he stands behind our wall. He is looking through the windows, gazing through the lattice. My beloved spoke and said to me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. While concurrences like the one related to the number 354 do not carry the same way as Scripture, they nonetheless give one pause. In the New Testament, the word coincidence is used only once. It is translated from a Greek word, synkyria, which is defined as a confluence that occurs by God's providential arrangement of circumstances. That is to say, where God is concerned, there are no coincidences. The remaining few anniversaries on our list are not precisely linked to Nisan 1. However, they do occur within days or months of this pivotal date. Let's continue then with reason number 7, Nissan 1 is a pivotal date in 2022, the Bethlehem Star. June 30th this year marks seven years or one sabbatical week since a much publicized reoccurrence of the Bethlehem Star, the Jupiter-Venus conjunction that heralded Jesus' first coming. While Jupiter-Venus conjunctions are not uncommon, the one seven years ago was notable for two reasons. First, it occurred amid a slew of other heavenly signs, including the aforementioned Nissan 1 eclipse. Second, it mirrored a similar triple conjunction of the two planets around the time of Jesus' birth in 32 BC. Significantly, both conjunctions occurred in the constellation Leo in the latter part of the month of June. Furthermore, both conjunctions occurred in the first year of a sabbatical cycle. Since both conjunctions occurred at the start of a new sabbatical week, they are separated by a span of exactly 288 weeks. Concerning the number 288, it is interesting to note that, according to those who study the numeric value of words in Scripture, it is the totient function of 888, the number associated with the manifestation of God in the flesh, Christ Jesus, to save humanity from its sins. In view of the correspondence of the two Jupiter-Venus conjunctions, the question is begged, might the repeat seven years ago have been a heavenly declaration of Jesus' soon return? Reason number eight, Nissan 1, is a pivotal date in 2022, Blood Moons. 2022 marks seven years or one sabbatical week since consecutive blood moon eclipses occurred on the spring and fall harvest festivals, Passover and Tabernacles. Significantly, the Tabernacles eclipse was a super blood moon, a phenomenon in which the moon's proximity to Earth causes it to appear larger than normal. According to the Jewish Talmud, blood moons are a bad omen for Israel. Could the extra-large blood moon of seven years ago, visible above Jerusalem, have been the ultimate seven-year warning? Reason number nine, Nissan 1, is a pivotal date in 2022, the leafing of the fig tree. 
March 10th this year marks 73 years since the newly planted fig tree, Israel, substantially enlarged its borders during the First Arab-Israeli War, which ended in March 1949. That same spring, the fledgling Jewish nation established its first government and was admitted to the UN organization, cementing its status as a nation. Israel's growth spurt in spring 1949 is noteworthy because Jesus says the generation who sees the yet tender fig branch put forth leaves will see all the end times events come to pass. Scripture defines an average human lifespan as 70 to 80 years. Counting 80 years from 1949, we arrive at 2029. Subtracting then seven years, the presumed length of the tribulation period from 2029, we arrive at 2022. Reason number 10, Nisan 1, is a pivotal date in 2022, the setting up of an abomination. 2022 marks 1,335 years since the Dome of the Rock, an Islamic shrine dedicated to Allah, was built on the Temple Mount in 687-88 AD. This is significant because in Daniel's final vision of the end times, it says, From the time that the daily sacrifice is abolished and the abomination that causes desolation is set up, there will be 1,290 days. Blessed is the one who waits for and reaches the end of the 1,335 days. In Bible prophecy, a day typically represents a year. Counting 1,290 prophetic years from when the temple sacrifice was taken away by Babylonian King Nebuchadnezzar in 586-85 BC, we arrive at 687-88 AD, the year the Dome of the Rock was set up. Counting forward 1,335 years from when the Dome of the Rock was set up, we arrive at 2022. To sum up, the first day of Nisan in 2022 marks precisely the end of seven weeks from the modern restoration of Jerusalem, the end of seven and sixty-two weeks from the rebuilding of Jerusalem's wall by Suleiman, one week since an unprecedented solar eclipse at the top of the globe. The start of the 11th week since Israel became a nation in 1948. The start of the 354th week since Daniel's week's prophecy began to be fulfilled in 457 BC. Anniversaries not precisely linked to Nisan 1, but which occur within days or months of this date, include the seven-year anniversary of the Bethlehem Star Conjunction, the seven-year anniversary of consecutive blood moons on God's Harvest Festivals, the 73rd anniversary of the leafing of the fig tree in spring 1949, and the 1,335th anniversary of the setting up of an abomination on the Temple Mount. With the aforementioned in view, it can be said that the year beginning at Nisan marks a calendrical convergence like no other. The most compelling anniversaries are those related to Daniel 9.25, a verse purposed to convey the time of Jesus' coming by a reckoning of sabbatical weeks. It defies coincidence that Daniel's weeks may be counted separately or together and from different restorations of Jerusalem to point to the same year, 2022. This remarkable concurrence is a result of the two restorations of Jerusalem, medieval and contemporary, being separated by a span of 62 weeks. What's more, the seven weeks reckoning suggests the year beginning at Nisan could be a jubilee. Will 2022 see world-changing events? Assuming our calendar reckoning is correct, it is a distinct possibility. Thanks for watching. God bless and Maranatha.